Hi everyone, it's Tuesday the 16th of February and it's uh, 11.45 in the morning. Now, in this video I've got a couple of things I want to show you that I picked up recently. Um, I actually got a free TV which I'm using here in the lounge, which I'll show you later. And I picked up a CRT TV, uh, which cost me just £5 on Facebook Marketplace. I'll show you that a little bit later as well. And there's a couple of other bits and bobs I want to show you uh, that I've rescued from the trash. Um, I also want to talk about live streaming and what I plan to do regarding that in the future. Um, I might talk a little bit about the uh, game Phasmophobia because I'm really enjoying that at the minute. Uh, and I've got a box to open up, which is on the floor down here. It's got barricade light in it. Um, but first, I'm going to talk about live streaming. So last week, I did a live stream to YouTube playing Phasmophobia. I did all the maps solo. Um, took me a long time to do that. I think a good two, three hours to do all the maps. Um, that went better than I thought. Six viewers is still rather small, but that's six more viewers than I actually expected to get, and I'm not just saying that. <laughs> I really did not expect to get anyone. Um, but I do want to go forwards with live stream. I did enjoy that evening. Um, so I want to do that more frequently. I've got a webcam set up. I'm not happy with the position of that. It's far too close to me, you know. The, when I look at it on the screen, it's like my face is there, right up close to the camera. I don't like that. I'm going to have to reposition it. I wouldn't mind putting it on this monitor. But the USB cable's not quite long enough. <laughs> um, or I could just not bother with a webcam. I don't know. But I don't want to just do video games. I do want to live stream doing other things maybe just a general hangout live stream um, I'm always tinkering with things like these barricade lamps for example or computers or something so I wouldn't mind live streaming something like that I may have to invest in a couple of different cameras to do that because I'm not sure I can connect this one up as a um, you know as a camera in that way never tried it so I'll have to look into that because I really could do, you know, like set that up as a bird's eye view, maybe, or an over the shoulder cam, whatever's going to work best. Uh, oh, and it's not going to be restricted to just YouTube either. Um, I do have a Twitch account, I'm going to link that down below as well. So if you wish to follow me on there, feel free to do so. <clears throat> I mean, that does give me the option where I could just stream games to Twitch and all the other stuff to YouTube, or I could just have set days where, you know, I'll, I could live stream a game on a specific day of the week. I don't know what way to take it yet. I haven't decided. Uh, but uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What would you like to see me do? <clears throat> um, oh, and I'm also setting up a Discord server for this channel as well. I've actually got it there. I've just got to tweak it and, uh, you know, add a, a cover picture thingy and whatnot. <clears throat> Profile picture, I'm not sure what you'd call it. And the rules and the channels and everything. So once that, I'll link that down below, but it isn't ready yet. Well, actually... What I will do, I'll link it when I've got it ready, which will hopefully be before I've got this video up. So, um, yeah, I think that is it for live streaming. So, should we get this box open? I've actually got three more lamps um, due in. Hopefully sometime this week. I haven't checked to see if they've been mailed yet. Uh, but I bought them as spares or repairs because there's bits missing. And they were only £7 for all three. So 
the cellar's got other lamps and if any of them that I want are still available next week I may buy some more from him. I don't know where my Stanley knife is so I'm using this very crappy box opener at the minute. I'll say that, i cut that bit one and that bit. That's just the other end. Maybe not. Sliding up at the bubble or out, I thought of sliding out of my hand, but it's just sliding out of the bubble. Now, this one had been for sale on eBay for quite some time, and the head's supposed to swivel, but that's a bit stiff. Not that that matters. And maybe this one isn't a swivel head one, but it's another 1970s. Could even be 60s this one because they actually first uh, came out here in the UK in 1966. And the story goes with these because these are um, licensed from RE Dietz in the USA. And it actually says it on the top here, well, it used to, on one of the shoulders. It doesn't on this one, so this could be an older one. Supplied by George Pike. Yeah, but anyway, the story behind these particular traffic lamps is a um, representative from Dorman Smith was on holiday in the USA, saw the lamps from R.E. Dietz, the 650 model, and thought that that would sell quite well over here, so came back home from his holiday, discussed it with um, his colleagues at Dorman Smith and they actually bought the uh, rights from our or the license I should say from RE Dietz to manufacture the 650 here under the Dorman Smith traffic lamp name and they came out in 1966 I think the 650 came out in 65 I've actually noticed with this one compared to my others that bolt is different as well I think, I think the head is slightly different on this one. The problem is with these old lamps, because they're old, this plastic is getting a little bit brittle, so I've got to be careful. I'm looking for a battery that's right here under the nose. Oh, there's some corrosion that side. I'll go this side with the battery then. have a steady burn in this style. I've now got a steady burn. Oh, I'm happy now. Don't care that the lens doesn't rotate. It might just be a bit stiff with dirt. It does actually look quite dirty in there to be honest. I mean it, it wants to rotate but I'm not going to force it. Well, that is brilliant. Didn't realise that was a steady burn. Yeah, it had been for sale on eBay for quite some time. Price had dropped a little bit. I've been watching it and been tempted and last week I thought I'd put a cheeky offer in and said cheeky offer was actually accepted so <laughs> and I got a steady burn to my collection. These three are also new additions. Two of these I got from a friend and fellow collector. That one and that one and that one but I plan to do a whole video showing all the lamps that I've got recently um, and lenses I've got some lamps down here um, all made up on those spare bodies that I bought and the spare highlight bodies this is actually one of them that I've made up because I've got the white backings with amber lenses I've got two pairs like that um, from the same friend and collector that I got these from and uh, yeah, I've put them on various bodies and whatnot and swapped some lenses around. 
So I've actually now got 20 versions on this type of body. I say on this type of body because that one, as you can see, is the Traffy B like, but it looks identical. Find one. But the Traffy like, because the body is exactly the same. It's basically the electronics and the lens combination that is different. That is all. Other than that, you know, the actual plastic body is exactly the same. Right. A little chat about phasmophobia, I think, before um, I show you the two TVs and talk about those. Because um, I'm always looking for other players to play with who play phasmophobia. So I don't really like jumping into random lobbies and whatnot. Because you never know if you're going to come across a group that are just going to mess around and not actually get the jobs done and whatnot, you know. So I prefer to play with friends who actually want to play the game. So, I think the game was actually released last October. I think. If memory serves correctly. So it's been out a few months already. But it's gained quite a following and I can see why. It's a game that's built on Unity. I use Unity to um, as the engine, I think is what they call it, the game engine. Um, but it's done really, really well. And I think the developers should be uh, pretty proud of uh, what they've achieved with it. The general idea is, for those who didn't see the stream and don't know what I'm talking about, is that with Phasmophobia, it's a ghost hunting game. Um, there's 12 different ghosts, but half a dozen different ghost models that can manifest, chase after you and kill you. Um, so it's classed, I think, as a horror game. Um, but uh, you start off with a basic kit. You can play the game solo. And there is VR mode as well, and you can mix VR players and non-VR players together, they can play together. And so far that's the only game I know of that actually allows that. Um, anyway, I digressed a bit there. So you start off with a basic hunting kit. You get a spirit box, a UV light, a standard crappy flashlight, a ghost writing book, and an EMF reader, and I think that is about it. Um, and the idea is you have to discover what ghost is haunting whatever map you're on. There's about five different houses. There's two farmhouses and three suburban buildings, houses. Uh, then there's the prison, the high school, and the asylum. And uh, you go in, you have to discover what room the ghost is in. And using your tools, you have to discover what the ghost is. Is it a wraith? Is it a banshee? Is it a poltergeist? Is it a, um, a gin? You know? And you have a little journal that you can pop up and you just fill in the details. Every time you get a piece of evidence, there's only three pieces of evidence you need to collect. Um, it's just like two little arrows, so you just scroll to whatever you find. If you get EMF level 5, then you just scroll till you get to that. And really easy to do. Same with the ghost. But the ghost, once you've got three pieces of evidence, the ghost will come up there. You only get the one choice, so you don't have to guess. Uh, and that, if you want, could be job done. Um, but there is bonus, or not bonus... Um, optional objectives uh, which could be something like cleanse the area with smudge sticks stop a hunt with a crucifix and get a ghost to walk through salt so there are a bunch of items that you can actually go and buy from the, the store as they call it you can get digital thermo you can get various sensors like motion sensor sound sensor etc um, you buy the salt, you can get the sanity pills, because if your sanity drops to a certain level, 
ghosts will hunt and certain ghosts can hunt at different levels of your sanity so you've got to watch that um, plus for extra XP points and money you can take photos if there's fingerprints on doors and windows and light switches you can take photos of all of those um, then you've got interaction photos which can be a door moving but the door has to actually be moving when you take the photo if the telephone rings and you take the photo you know straight after that will count as an interaction <clears throat> um, there's even a Ouija board in the game you can take a photo of that and it will come up in your diary as a Ouija board if you ask it a question and you take a photo with the stone thing moving that's an interaction photo more money you can only take I think it's 10 photos max you can take <coughs> but they all have to count oh there's even voodoo dolls on the farm maps on the farmhouse maps you can take photos of them their interactions for ghost manifests sometimes when it disappears you take a photo right after it disappears and that counts as an interaction but I've had times where it hasn't and also you can take a photo of the ghost you can get a ghost pick that's a lot of XP if you can get that one uh, oh and there's a bone on every map that you have to find well you don't have to find it but you can find it sometimes it will spawn in an awkward place where you just cannot find it it's hidden but, uh, yeah, it's a really good game. I enjoy it. Um, like I said, you can play solo, or you can play with up to four friends. So, if anyone does play it and they want to team up, let me know in the comments. Right. So a couple of weeks ago, I'd uh, it was actually a Sunday evening. I'd just come home from mum's, had lovely Sunday dinner and whatnot. <clears throat> And out by the bins was a flat screen TV, an LCD. And uh, I thought, oh, that might be something to take apart for a video, you know, and maybe get it working if I can find out what the problem is and fix it. And so I brought it up here <clears throat> and I plugged it in. And it turned on fine. There was nothing wrong with the screen. The screen wasn't damaged. It was filthy. It needed a good clean. <clears throat> I took a bunch of uh, anti-back wipes to it. I might actually have to go get a drink out of the fridge. Just grab it for a second. <clears throat> scratchy which is why I'm coughing. It does that so I've been talking for a while because uh, these videos do not take one take. <laughs> That's better. Yeah where was I? Oh yeah the TV. So I thought well it turns on fine. Do all the inputs work? So I plugged various things in to make sure, you know, like the SCART sockets work, the um, AV inputs work through the RCA jacks. Even tried the HDMI. No problems there. It detected all the inputs and I got a picture through everything. So I stuck a TV antenna to it and uh, put it on a TV channel, actually put it on a music channel. And the following day, I left it running most of the day to see if you know there's a problem that arises when it when it's warmed up, when it's been running for a few hours. Nothing. <laughs> it worked flawlessly. So for free, I've managed to pick up a Sony Bravia. That works. The only thing that was sort of I suppose you could say wrong with it is that it didn't have a remote control with it. I had to go and buy one. Oh, pardon me. And uh, for 14 99 I got one locally. I got a um, 
an all-in-one remote which I've actually managed to lose again. I keep losing that thing. It's got a nice bright shiny silver face to it and I keep losing it. Yeah, I can see the remote to the other TV laying just beside it. Um, one advantage with this one is, I'm actually pointing at it and you can't really see, you can just about see my little finger. Hi. <laughs> Um, is that this one's got the stand and the other TV I had up there didn't, it was just sort of leaning against the wall. Because <clears throat> um, I think that TV used to have a stand for it but it might even be in Mum's loft. It may have got thrown out because it was on a wall bracket in Mum's um, summer house and I pinched it for here while I moved the TV back from here to the bedroom. Because when they when we were filming for um, Filthy House SOS, they took the TV from the bedroom and put in here. And I actually quite like that idea, but I also want the TV back in the bedroom, so... I, <laughs> I did that and then went and stole the one out of Mum's um, summer houses that wasn't being used. <clears throat> and the fact that they're planning on moving soon and they can't take the summer house with them, so... But I've actually tucked it out of the way and I'll keep hold of that as a spare for the time being. Mum may want one for the conservatory when they move or if she has another summer house may want it for that so <clears throat> if change plans if change plans if plans change rather then I'll probably get rid of it or something. <clears throat> I don't want to keep things hanging around that I'm not going to use. Says the hoarder. <laughs> Actually I'm not as bad. Since filming that show I'm not as bad now. But, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, pretty much aside from the remote control missing the only thing that was sort of wrong with it was the fact that it was filthy. So I have no idea why anyone threw that out by the bins. It just seems wasteful to me. I could have put it up on, I don't know, Facebook Marketplace, 50 quid. But I got 50 quid easy for that, even without the remote control. Because, like I said, I went to Roy's here in town and bought a 14.99 all-in-one remote control. And... Uh, it did take me a while to set it up, but that's because I was reading the instructions wrong. <laughs> and doing things wrong. So, <clears throat> but once you've got past that bit, you could set that remote control up over and over again. Ridiculously easy. Anyway, I'm going to pause you for a moment so I can uh, move you to the bedroom. And show you the next TV. Et voila, just like that. We have moved. And it was almost just as quick in real life as it was on film. <laughs> anyway, on film, on camera. Don't use film anymore, do we? So, here's this little beauty that I paid £5 for. Found it on Facebook Marketplace, open to offers. I actually offered more than £5 for it, but she said that was too much. And said, if I give him a fiver, I could have it. And uh, her partner was also kind enough to drop it off for me. So, it's a Centra brand. GX9000. I've googled the model number and the name, and I can't find anything on this. Um, but, five pounds, it does work. And it actually has a pretty decent picture on it as well. Um... Very 1980s, so I'm guessing this is a 1980s TV. Just the general styling of it. In fact, I'm about 99.9% .9 certain this would be a 1980s era TV. Mid-1980s, I guess. Maybe later. Could even be earlier, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't think it's a high-end model. There's really not a lot to it. it did come with a remote at some point in its life. It's got the little sensor behind there. I don't know if I could get a mod, a mo you said a model, a modern all-in-one to work on a unit this old. I might be able to. I've got some older um, 
all in one remote. I could try that. And basically we've got power on and off, hard on and off switch there, little dinky red LED comes on there. Very temperamental um, power on standby button there. I think what I'm going to have to do is either replace the button under there because it's just a soft touch button or um, clean it out. And it comes on, got your channel indicator there and that's pretty much the only indicator you have. <laughs> uh, but under here we have your bright controls, your contrast, your colour, tune, your memory and set, your vertical hold and AFT on and off. And I don't know what AFT is and I can't see what it does. I'll flick the switch and I don't know. Channel controls or your program as they call it, volume, and that said the standby on button. Uh, but uh, like I said, there's no other indicator, there's no volume indicator. See, that like comes up on screen. And it's exactly the same for the tuning, so you have to completely guess. Well, with the volume, you've got to do it by ear. And for tuning, you've just got to press the buttons and hope it's doing something. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the only downside to this. But uh, it's all set up. See, now isn't that a pretty good looking picture for a CRT? And that's probably going to be a line scroll. Yeah, because of the refresh rate at the camera. But that line going up the screen is not there in person, not to the naked eye, it's just on the camera. Oh, I think the colour might be a little bit sharp. Is it the contrast? Contrast isn't doing a lot. It is changing it, but not a lot. That's better. Turn the volume down a bit more so I don't get copyrighted. Anyway, I was pretty impressed with that. So I want to get that set up properly and I want to set up my Sega Master System on this as well. Yeah, that colour's looking a bit better now. It's not as sharp and in your face. Uh, I think I'm going to set it up on this bench here beside the uh, retro PCs. I've just realised that this monitor has slid across that way. So I'm going to clear all the airfix planes. I might actually hang those airfix planes from the ceiling somewhere <clears throat> rather than on their stands. I need to remember where I put the propeller for this one as well. It's the only downside to that one, the propeller keeps falling off. It's only that one for some reason. It's still there on the old Spitfire. And Lidl's have a bunch more of these in at the minute. I did actually get a couple of uh, cars and another Challenger tank. It's okay on this one actually look. But for some reason the propeller on that one keeps falling off. It was up here somewhere around the monitor. Hopefully it's still here somewhere. <clears throat> and, uh, I actually quite like these uh, click together airfix kits. Uh, oh, one more thing that I actually want to show you. I'll bring you back this way. Took some rubbish down to the bins there. Yesterday, actually, I found this in there. Albeit the lampshade was duct taped to the lamp because there's no collar to fix a lampshade to this lamp holder, which I've noticed is a bit bent out of shape. But the actual lamp stand, I think, is marble. That is really, really heavy and hard. Which is one reason I rescued it because I thought that is a very nice lamp stand, if anything else. I'm going to have to rewire it, for one, metal lamp holder should be earthed and there's no earth, 
connection on this, so I'm going to have to change that. Which means I'm going to have to put a bit of three core flex on it as well. Which also means I'm going to have to just run a drill bit down that hole just to widen it this end so I can get a cable through it. I might actually have to make a little bit of modification to the thread bit at the bottom here as well. I might just cut a little notch out so the cable will go that way and sit flush rather than, I don't know if you can see it, like that. I'm going to probably stick some feet on the bottom of this as well just so it sits nicely. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I might keep it for myself because for some reason I actually quite like it. Or I could donate it to charity. That was my, was my um, other idea. Fix it all up and donate it. Uh, while we're on the subject of uh, electrics and electronics, right here, just about see it, I've got my Atari 2600 in bits because it's decided it doesn't want to work. I thought it was the voltage regulator, because I can't get nothing out on the TV. Change that, still nothing. So I thought while I'm in here, I'll change at least one of the electrolytic caps, because the only one I had a spare of at the time. Still nothing, and um, I still can't find the issue. <laughs> um, it's got me rather baffled at the minute. Which is a shame, because I wouldn't mind getting that up and running and set up somewhere as well. I wouldn't mind perhaps setting both of these old TVs up on here, on the bench, you know, to where I am, behind you. Beside you, whatever you want to call it. Somewhere. <sighs> uh, this game brings back so many memories. It's one of the few games that I actually completed. Oh no, it wasn't. It was the Master System version. Which really doesn't look much different to this one anyway. Because yeah, we never had a Mega Drive when I was little, we only had the Master System. Had the Master System, then we went up to the PlayStation 1. <clears throat> I remember that, that was only me and first brother alive at the time. Or old enough, I should say. Yeah, because our sister was born, but not old enough to play games. My second brother didn't arrive until 1998. So, me and... first brother... got a PS1 as a joint Christmas present. And I used to play the hell out of V-Rally on the PS1. Loved it. Absolutely loved that game. <clears throat> I might even bring the PS1 in here and connect that up to this as well. Although, there is no AV inputs on this, so <laughs> getting them connected might be a challenge. But I'll see what I can do. Anyway, I think I've rambled on enough for this video, don't you? So, if you have any comments, suggestions on anything I've said in the video, then feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, I hate it when my mind goes blank like that. Well, it doesn't go blank, it just locks up. <laughs> it's like when a computer freezes, you know, then suddenly it unfreezes. Yeah, anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked the video, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.